in life. The book, When Life Changes or You Wish It Would, by Carol Adrian, describes how to survive and thrive in uncertain times. Carol Adrian joins us this morning to talk about why it is so many of us have trouble accomplishing things we think we want. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, you are a Ph.D., and apparently this work comes to you from being an intuitive counselor. Right. Can you describe what that is exactly? Right. I work with people in a counseling situation, and they always come in with questions about what to do. It's usually around career, money, health, love. So I work with them to kind of figure out what it is they want to do, not so much from a logical point of view, because our mind kind of gets in the way there, mm -hmm. but more like, well, what is calling to you? What, what have you, what's your intuition been telling you lately? Is that the same thing as a gut check? Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. A gut check, a hunch, a power hunch. Mm -hmm. When you're doing that, of course, you want to set some goals and tell us about, right. about the importance of setting goals. Right, and I call that like putting yourself on assignment. Um, I like it better than goals because it sort of is an interaction with life. And, uh, for example, I had a friend who was... Uh, she, tra she made a big life change from being a real estate person to a travel writer. And then she wanted to make a further change going into like presentations and public speaking. And she had this strong intention or, you know, putting herself on assignment to learn about public speaking. And then one day she found herself on this plane flight to Hawaii and her seatmate was a professional speaker. So he had four hours to explain everything she needed to know. So it's like when you put yourself, like, have a goal like that uh -huh. and keep it in your mind, usually you'll find some kind of unexpected answer. You said that one of the biggest fear things to deal with is, of course, fear, the fear of not being able to handle whatever happens. Exactly. Does that stop most people in Exactly. Their one of the biggest things that we face when we're in uncertain times, I think right now, particularly, everybody's feeling really like, what's going to happen with my job? Do I even like my job? You know, what's My next? social security for retirement? Everything, sure. yeah. Can I count on anything anymore, you know? And when you're in that phase, I think that it's natural for all of your own personal insecurities to start coming up. And you get so uncomfortable that you start asking more questions. And the big one is, can I handle it? I think when I've worked with people, I've seen the master fear is, can I handle what's going to come to me? You don't, you're not quite sure. Mm -hmm. If you just knew what it was, then you could handle it. And I think that's where the uncertainty really starts to undermine our confidence. Which I guess would, would prevent a lot of people from making these changes, and, and exactly. in which case they mm -hmm. remain in a rut or remain Stop. miserable. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I just had a woman I talked to the other day about that, and she had taken a job only six weeks ago. And it was really a plum job in a very high-profile industry, and she just was miserable. But she didn't realize that she had a choice. I mean, she felt like, oh, this is a good job, this is what I wanted, but it wasn't what she wanted. It was kind of too negative, mm -hmm. I guess, and she wanted to do something where she could really help people. So people would say, well, it's easy to say, but I have the wife, the, pa the husband, the yeah. kids, the mortgage, the, the dog, et cetera, et cetera. So how do you begin to make that change? What's the first, some of the first things you do to make Right. Change? You really begin to look at what it is that you're trying to get at, what's making you most uncomfortable. And sometimes the best thing you can do is just kind of open up your attitude. The only thing you really have control over your life is really your attitude when you get right down to it, mm -hmm. sort of. That's the attitude. So if you begin to think of yourself, I'm going to be open. I want to make a change. You look at some of the priorities, like you say, set some goals. I want to have a better, I want to feel better at work. I want to meet better people. I want to work with people and feel in integrity. I had a client the other day, and her biggest thing was that she was, selling too much advertising and it wasn't in integrity with her and she's miserable and she needs to shift away from that priority of just making money solely to making money and having a, a better feeling about it so sure. you set priorities you take an open attitude you're going to be open to see what what's presenting itself and then you work with that it instead seems of having a get asking to just show me the guarantee and go for it right. it doesn't always work <coughs> linearly it seems that we're not really talking just about drastic changes we're talking about making small changes in your absolutely. life absolutely well. that's one of the things i talk about is that um if you make small steps you're in, in the right direction you're going to get there eventually mm -hmm. because the thing that really seems to freak us out the most is i want to be I'm here, and I want to be over there, and I don't know how to get there. So sure. you see it in terms of big steps, and it's really small steps, micro steps. It says recognize and revise limited thinking. I think that that becomes most of, our, most of us in our lives. We get stuck in that we place. We're afraid to, to make change. One of, the, one of the simple misperceptions, I think, that really paralyzes us is the feeling that we are going to look stupid. We're going to do something and look dumb. I've heard this over and over from people. 
I want to do this thing, but I don't know how to do it right, or I don't know enough about it. I'm not good enough. Afraid to make a mistake. Afraid to make a mistake is one of the primary things. Mm -hmm. The other one is ha assuming that you have to have 100% clarity before you make any moves. Yeah. And you have to have it all planned out. And there is no right or wrong way because we're diff dealing with different personalities. What may be right for one person is not going to be the correct exactly. way to do it for somebody else. And you don't even know when life changes, things happen to you. I had a big change happen to me business-wise last week. And it was the first thing I thought, well, it could be good, it could be bad, <laughs> is that old Zen say, and yeah. I, I rely on that more and more because I, at first something will look like it's going to knock you off your feet, but it really could have a silver lining. Great, good. Well, it sounds like some good advice. We're going mm -hmm. to uh, pass it on to folks if you'd like to read more. Thank you, author Carol Adrian, for the, for the tips and the name of the book, When Life Changes, or You Wish It Would. You can <laughs> log on to Cron.com for more information on Carol and her work. Thanks a lot. That's who joined us.